what's happened in the last 10 years that you could summarize in this area? What are yeah. the key things that have happened? Where are we today that's different from where we were 10 years ago? Yeah. So the field of optic nerve regeneration has had massive advances over where we were, say, 10, 15 years ago. Um, I would say through the efforts of several laboratories, um, an area that was once thought to be intractable, that is the ability of the uh, optic nerve to regenerate itself, uh, has just made tremendous strides. I should amend that statement somewhat to say that earlier work, going back quite a ways, early in the 20th century and then continuing through the uh, 1980s, 1990s from the uh, work of the Aguayo group had shown that the cells of the retina, the projection neurons of the retina, the retinal ganglion cells, can in fact regenerate axons through the environment of a peripheral nerve graft that was affixed to the cut end of the optic nerve. But regeneration through the native environment of the optic nerve itself was long considered to be impossible. And the reason for that, well, there were several reasons, but the primary one was thought that the, um, the cellular environment of the optic nerve was just considered to be very hostile to axon growth. So going back now almost 20 years ago, uh, a scientist in, uh, in Great Britain, Martin Berry, uh, made a discovery that implanting a piece of tissue into the back of the eye, uh, this tissue came from a peripheral nerve graft, a fragment of peripheral nerve, was able to stimulate the nerve cells in the retina, the projection neurons, the retinal ganglion cells, um, enabled some of those neurons to extend axons into the native environment of the optic nerve itself. So that was really a revolutionary discovery. Uh, our lab started working in this area shortly after that. We had previously been doing studies in the uh, regeneration of the optic nerve in lower vertebrates, like fish, who can regenerate their optic nerves normally uh, under normal conditions. Um, then we switched, um, at about that time we had been studying mammalian retinal ganglion cells, and based on this paper from Martin Berry, we tested some molecules that we had been studying in our lab that we saw were able to stimulate outgrowth in, uh, in cell culture, in retinal neurons in cell culture, and we discovered at that point that uh, simply causing an inflammatory reaction to take place in the eye, very strange, uh, was enough to cause some of those neurons, some of the retinal ganglion cells, to regenerate damaged axons into the optic nerve. We uh, found out that it was because of a molecule that was being produced by the uh, inflammatory cells, and we identified that molecule. Uh, and then there were a number of other discoveries from other groups that were turned out to be complementary to these discoveries. Uh, for example, a scientist right where I am at Boston Children's Hospital, Ji Gang He, discovered that um, if you knock out genes that normally repress growth of neurons, that will enable some growth to occur. Jeff Goldberg made a discovery that other factors, uh, factors that normally suppress the transcription of certain genes, if you knock those out, you will get some regeneration. And then we started discovering that these discoveries, that these findings from the different laboratories were um, somewhat complementary to each other. And if you put them together, there was a tremendous synergy, and you were able to get some of the retinal ganglion cells to regenerate axons all the way from the eye back to the brain. And in a paper we published in 2012, we found that some of those nerve cells uh, were able to send projections back to the appropriate target areas in the brain, and uh, those axons would make connections. And um, we saw some evidence of uh, functional return, a little bit. Uh, kind of early, early glimmerings or gleams of uh, a functional restoration. So we were happy about that, but of course that was really just the beginning. Um, and what we realized is that the percentage of all the ganglion cells that were regenerating their axons was really a very small percentage of the total number. So at that point we started to try to understand what was uh, preventing all the other retinal ganglion cells from number one, surviving injury to their axons, and number two, what was preventing them from regenerating their axons. So at that point, uh, I teamed up with another colleague at Boston Children's Hospital, Harvard Medical School, Paul Rosenberg, a very knowledgeable, uh, very scholarly investigator, who had done work on, um, oddly enough, the role that zinc, the element zinc, plays in the nervous system. And uh, there have been a number of scientists who've been studying zinc biology, 
both because zinc is essential to the functioning of cells, but when things go awry, zinc can also be deadly. It can be highly toxic to nerve cells. And there were important discoveries in the 1990s and, and subsequently showing that after conditions such as ischemic stroke, um, zinc was playing a major role in the death of cells. There is a lot of research implicating zinc in Alzheimer's disease and other neuropathological conditions. So we started to look at the role that zinc might be playing in the retina uh, after, the, after the nerve fibers, after the optic nerve is damaged. And we discovered then something really surprising, and that is that levels of zinc, of free zinc, ionic zinc, went up sky high in the retina when the optic nerve was injured. And we've been studying now the molecular mechanisms that give rise to that increase. But the surprising thing is that if you bind up that zinc with compounds called chelators uh, that, that, have, that will bind that zinc with high affinity and high specificity, we can actually strongly improve the ability of retinal ganglion cells to survive and the ability of those cells to regenerate their axons. So this is a, um, a kind of a previously unrecognized factor that's playing a major role in determining whether the, uh, whether the retinal ganglion cells are able to survive injury and whether they're able to regenerate their axons. So that's what my talk was about primarily, was the number one, the lead up in our previous work to getting some regeneration, and then secondarily, the role that zinc is playing as a, uh, as a major factor in regulating the outcome after injury to the optic nerve. And I believe that that will be relevant for glaucoma as well. So here we are in 2016. What is your outlook for optic nerve regeneration going forward? So going forward, I would be, I, I tend to be very optimistic about this. Uh, we're involved with, uh, with several other investigators, collaborators, um, in a project um, to enhance the amount of regeneration that's possible. Right now, it's still an empirical question whether these axons that are growing back, we know that in general they can find the correct areas of the brain to connect to, but what we don't know is whether they can form a map of the visual world onto the brain. Uh, so the way uh, that's described in the field is a topographic map, which means that adjacent points in the visual world get mapped in an orderly fashion so that uh, the understanding of what's out there in space gets conveyed into the brain in, in an orderly fashion. That enables us to interpret that information. So we don't know that that's possible yet. And that's one of the, one of the big questions that has to be looked at uh, in the near future. And of course, looking for more and more ways of coaxing those retinal ganglion cells to survive and, and to regenerate their axons. But I think one of the things that's very exciting is that the National Eye Institute has really made this a signature program of theirs. And so what they are now calling their uh, Audacious Goals Initiative um, includes regeneration of the optic nerve. And I think the general idea of it is restoration of vision by either replacing cells or, re or repairing the circuitry of the visual system, including the optic nerve. So this area, which was once kind of a lonely area of, of investigation, has now become recognized as a, a really important and feasible area of, uh, of, of research. <laughs>